Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Nicole Petalides. Greg Pendy's with us, Equity Research Director at Clear Street. Right now, uh, the Dow is down about 193 points, so we're off the lows on the day. I uh, wanted to take a look here at AI driven Earth observation. Some of the data that's been coming in. Why is this uh, something different or advantageous for the new year? Yeah, absolutely. So, AI data. Uh, from Earth imagery. It's been done for years, uh, but what the key changes that we're seeing that take place right now is when we talk about AI Earth imaging, we can be talking in the terabytes of data daily. So we're just talking hundreds of thousands of images. And the key game changer right now that's unlocking the value in these huge databases is AI and machine learning tools that can now give rapid insights to customers um, in areas from defense industry, but also in areas like agriculture, insurance, and also, you know, climate change. Wow, um, that's a lot across the board. Um, let's start with at least one of them when we talk about insurance, for example, or climate change. I mean, I guess you're looking at how things are reacting, whether it's water or wind or things like that that make a difference. Absolutely. So um, there's companies that are actually mapping like Planet Labs, which are mapping the entire Earth daily. And they've been doing this for over eight years. So you can uh, essentially now use AI and machine learning tools to look for changes and patterns over time or uh, more immediately when you cross over to the insurance industry, if there's a natural disaster, um, you know, companies like AXA are able to kind of in instantly be able to assess the damage with earth imaging uh, data. Right, understood. I mean, when we think about what we're getting that is um, real time, you talked about defense. Tell me about that. Um, you know, what would be maybe a base case that could be happening in 2026. Why is this important? Give us a, a scenario. Maybe something that's even likely to happen or happened already. Yeah, absolutely. So um, within the defense sector, you have areas, you know, let's just take a, a good example, like this, uh, the Chinese spy balloon. They just kind of, we, we noticed it when it appeared over Alaska, but no one had really been looking for it um, until it was finally discovered. Sure. But when you have Earth databases, like a company like Planet Labs, not only were they able to identify the spy balloon at that point in time, but then they were able to go back in the database over six months and track where it was at each point during a day uh, to find out where it had actually launched from in China. Right, understood. Um, when we think about the investment or stocks that could move along with this, um, you know, now we're talking about it in the big picture. What can investors do to make money on the monetization of the AI in the global lunar world? Yeah, so the name we like right now uh, within the AI and Earth observation side of things is Planet Labs. We uh, raised our price target today to 22, and we believe that the business model is not only uh, accelerating due to the use of AI, but we believe that the financial outlook is very compelling for a lot of investors. As we look out over the next two years, we believe that they're pos well positioned to reach that golden rule of 40, uh, which is usually what a lot of investors look for um, in the high, high growth, um, well-respected uh, software and data as a service companies. And we see Planet Labs positioned uh, two years out for 26% top line growth and a 14% EBIT margin. And you add those up and that gets you to the rule of 40. Yeah, I saw you have um, other things here, low earth orbit, global star, intuitive machines. I don't know which ones are actually acronyms or which ones are publicly traded. Are all three of those publicly traded and do you like all three of those? Yes, so um, we'll take it step by step. So we talked about the Earth observation side of it, where we like Planet Labs. Uh, when we move over to Global Star, uh, that's on the, a communication satellite. So again, like Planet Labs is taking pictures of us here on Earth. Global Star is actually working on communications um, systems in low Earth orbit. Their constellation 
has a unique relationship uh, with Apple as a wholesale partner. So if you have an iPhone 14 or higher, what Global Star is actually able to do is get rid of a lot of those dead zones that we all know of, where we're not within reach of a cell tower, and you'll still have text and SOS capability if you have an Apple uh, 14 or higher. So essentially, the the towers are not we've we've built out cell towers over the past 20 years and we still have areas where it's uneconomical to put those towers or just improbable to put those towers so think of satellites as the uh, as able to fill that void when you're out of range and you're going to see a lot more direct to device plays we think in 2026 uh, to get rid of those dead zones is there any sort of um agenda, catalyst, vote, uh, finding, something that is going to put a date on my calendar when it comes to these names in the first quarter or the second or in the first half of the year? Is there anything that might be a catalyst for any one of these names? Is something working on something special or is there any sort of vote or anything like that? Yeah, so um, well, with Global Star, what we we're talking about, we'll be watching for those iPhone 17 sales. You had a guest on earlier uh, on your options segment who was talking about them. But the more iPhone uh, penetration of 14 and higher, that's good for Global Star because that enables more devices uh, that can access their uh, handset. When we move on to a catalyst rich name, I would go over to Intuitive Machines, ticker LUNR. Uh, this morning we took our price target on that name from 17 to 25. And we believe that's gonna be very catalyst rich. Intuitive Machines is a play on the lunar economy. It's a play on uh, the plants to not only return humans, uh, to the moon in 2028, but to actually build a permanent presence on the moon in uh, 2030. And some of the key catalysts we'll be watching for with Intuitive Machines will be one, a lunar terrain vehicle contract, which they are one of three bidders on. Uh, we expect that to be announced hopefully in the first half of 2026. We also believe that they'll be preparing for their first uh, I am three mission launch, which will carry an actual satellite um, of theirs that can uh, begin the start of a communication system orbiting the moon. So similar to Global Star, which is uh, focused on communications around low Earth orbit, uh, we believe that 2026 we're going to see uh, the U.S. and Intuitive Machines play a key role on building a communication system around the moon. Great to see you, Greg Fendi. Interesting, um, you know, topic. We don't talk about this all the time. Really appreciate it. Greg Fendi of Clear Street. Thank you.